half of the time we never even talked about what we were there to talk about. That was uh, board meetings in West Palm. Great times. <coughs> okay, so hey, Facebook. You can see, hopefully. It's maybe a little dark, but we'll get through this. Uh, turn in your Bibles to John chapter 11. <coughs> And um, we are up to verse 23. So, Heavenly Father, again, we thank you. Lord, let us uh, minimize our distractions and increase our concentration. Amen. We need the Holy Spirit now, Lord. Thank you, Father, that dwells within us, that teaches us and uh, prompts us. Holy Spirit is an amazing prompter. He prompts you in, in areas where we're off and corrects us and encourages in areas when we're going the right way. So bless these thoughts, bless these words this evening. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. So if you remember from last week, um, <clears throat> we finished up in verse 14 and 15 where Jesus told his disciples as they're on their way, Lazarus is dead. Lazarus is dead. He's dead. He's dead. So this is where we're going from there. And basically it was um, four days later already. It took them that period of time to get there. So now Lazarus is in the tomb dead for four days. But he has to tell his disciples that. And he has two different conversations here that we're going to go into. And uh, the first conversation is with Martha. And so in verse 23, you got that up? Mm -hmm. It's, uh, and Jesus said unto her, thy brother shall rise again. Now, this was very comforting to her to be able to hear these things, that her brother will rise again. So this gave her great comfort, and she believed that because she was taught that. The, the Pharisees taught that. That was their doctrine. Remember in Acts 23, it talks about the Sadducees didn't believe in the resurrections, but the Pharisees <coughs> did. So this is confirmation for her. She knew that, and, um, and she probably also heard Jesus preach in that same doctrine that in the in the um, at the end times that the dead in Christ shall rise. He preached that in, in John uh, 5, I think it's 25 through 29. So she had this teaching, she had this doctrine, and, um, and that's what he comforts her with, that your brother is going to rise again. You know, this isn't the end. This isn't a final thing that your brother will rise again. And... Um, and then in 25, he will speak again. And this is after Martha says, I know, Lord, in the last day he will rise again. So this is what he, uh, she brings up to him. So she had an understanding of that. And she, believed, she knew that. She had knowledge of that. And Jesus says, I, in, in verse 25, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believes in me, though he were dead, yet he shall live. So um, this is number five of the I am's. And that's very specific to the Jewish people because that's God. God says, I am. And Jesus is identifying with that. So this is number five. Who, who remembers the last four? that we've already preached about. Not just knowing them, I want chapter and verse. You guys are Bible students. You guys got them? Okay, let's, let's hit these. So John 6, 35, I am the bread of life. Right? John 8, 12, I am the light of the world. John 10, 7 and 10, 9, I am the door to the shepherd. To the, for the sheep, I am the door. 
uh, John, what is it, 3, 4, 10, 11, I am the good shepherd. And now 11, 25, I am the resurrection and the life. I am the resurrection and the life. So this is five. We're through five of them. Okay? And um, so this, this becomes important um, in claiming this because in John 5, 26, uh, the Bible tells us that the Father has life in him and the Son has life in himself too. So there that, there's that oneness, but the life, this Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life. Remember, she's saying, yeah, I know later on. This is going to take place in one day in the future. This is something futuristic, but Jesus says, wait a minute, I am the life, and all life is in Christ. So she's looking future, and he's speaking about the now. And, and boy, do we do that all the time. We even get a verse, and we can even claim it, but we're not claiming it for now. We're claiming it for later on, or we're claiming it as, oh, this could happen to me, instead of believing in it and, and claiming it and understanding that this is a promise for us. And we all do that. And, and Jesus is saying, no, no. I am the resurrection and the life. So it is now. It's, it's, it's future, but, but now. Now. And that, and, and that becomes important. So in John 1, 4, in him... Hey, Christine, God bless you. So John 1, 4, in him was life, right? In him was life, and the life was a light to men. So Jesus Christ talks about being life. Christ gives life. Christ is life. He's the resurrection. He gives life. He gives eternal life. He gives eternal life. He's, he gives life now. You know, everything was created by him and for him. And without him, there was nothing that was made. He's the essence of all life. Plant life, animal life, you know, eternal life, biological life. All from Christ. I am the resurrection and the life. I am that life. So the, the, the topic is not when, you know, Martha saying it's, you know, in the last day, yeah, my brother's going to rise. And that's great comfort to me, especially if you've lost a loved one. It's great comfort to know that, you know, that they will, you know, if they've known Christ, that they will rise, they'll get a new body. Not this old thing. There's, there's eternal life. Um, but, but, but it's not about the time. It's not future. You know, it's not when the, the, the subject and the object here is life that is only found in Christ. That's what this is about. And Martha is missing it because she's seen her brother die, and now it's been four days. And, and she hears Christ give her this amazing comfort. Your brother will rise again. And she automatically goes to, yeah, one day. And this is where Christ comes in and says, no, I am the resurrection and the life. Mm -hmm. He who believes in me, though he were dead, yet he shall live. Okay, verse 26. And he who believes, and he, look, I love this verse. And whosoever liveth and believe in me shall never die. Believe thou this. Believe thou this. So Colossians 3, 4. When Christ, it says, who is our life shall appear. You know, so he is our life. We have to understand that all essence of our life, all essence of our being comes from Christ, especially this new creation, because that's, that's, what, that's what allows us to get to know the resurrection, resurrected Christ. 1 John, 1 John 1, 1 and 2, um, it says God will, uh, we need God to manifest this life. 
it, it takes God to manifest this resurrection life within us. Um, and it says, you know, we've seen him and we pray that God just would manifest this life to us. So here, here becomes the key because he asked her, he asked Martha, and this is important, do you believe this? And, and, and what a statement to make because, you know, she, again, she was taught by the Pharisees. She was taught that way and, and she understood, she had knowledge of it. She had knowledge of, of her brother ra raising it. And, but then Christ goes and says, you know, yeah, you know it, you understand it, but at this moment, do you believe it? You know, I can know all things of the, you know, I can know a lot of things of the Bible. I can, you know, quote scripture. I can have doctrine. I can have a great understanding. But do I believe it? Do you believe it? And that's where all the essence of life gets formed in, in, in our minds and in our hearts and gives us this amazing life. So the, the Christian will never see death. Never. Because Christ conquered it. He's the resurrection and the life. To be absent from the body is to be immediately present with, with the Lord. Do you believe this? You know, that, that is it. So that is life. That becomes life. And life is found then in Jesus Christ. But Martha, do you believe it? Don't just quote it. Don't just have a good understanding at it. Don't have a theological uh, background where you can just break it down and exegete it and have all that. Do you believe it now? Do you believe it now? And, and, I, and I love that. So we are, we are being taught, you know, we are being taught this life a lot. We are learning still about this, this life. You know, so she knew it. She understood it. But did she believe it? Did she really believe that? So, you know, so it doesn't matter what we know. You know, it's, is if, you know, is it life? Is it life to me? Can I receive things from this book that automatically right now become life? I don't, I don't want stories. I don't want a good message and, you know, the, you know, uh, you know, I want life from it. Does it produce life and does it produce fruit in individuals? That's how we know the spirit is behind the message. You know, we don't want this animated message without the spirit of God giving life to the hearer mm -hmm. because that's what it's all about. It, 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 are, are, we, are we getting life in it? Is life imparted to me by the Holy Spirit by, through what I hear? Is the Holy Spirit imparting, imparting to my spirit the words of this book which give me life? Do I, when I hear a message about grace, am I, am I receiving life from that? When I hear a message about forgiveness, am I, am I getting life from that? Like we talked Sunday, right? Is is forgiveness? Am I experiencing forgiveness? You know, I might know to forgive my brother or my sister. I might know that theologically. I've been taught that, but am I living that forgiveness? Am I practicing by forgiving and, and receiving forgiveness? So is it experiential that it turns to life? You know. Grace and mercy. Am I am I experiencing mercy so that it becomes life? Am I experiencing the mercy of God in my own life? Am, is the Holy Spirit impl implementing this mercy that I get to receive it? You know, knowing that I don't deserve it, but He gives it to me anyway. You know, am I experiencing love? Am I experiencing the life of love in my life? You know, from the one who gives life, the one who loves me, is it becoming experiential? Or am I just going around, oh, I love you. 
you know, and it's all sentimental and it's not life. You know, it's not that resurrection life. So this is an amazing statement when he says this to her. Okay, um, let's drop down to verse 34. Okay, now let me, um, let me read this here first. It says, where have you laid him? Remember, we're doing red letter edition. We're not going line by line. Where have you laid him? So now he's talking to sister number two, right? Now he's speaking to Mary. So, and, and this, is, this is incredible. Listen here. So when he finally gets to uh, greet her, She's weeping, and the people around her are weeping, and it causes Christ to weep. Both women said the same thing to him. If you were here, my brother wouldn't have died. If you were here, he would have never. If you would have been earlier than the four days late, he would have never died. But remember, Jesus is never late. He's always right on time. No matter what you're going through, he is always on time. He's never late. That four days is not late. So, so listen, here, here's the thing. So both of them ask the same thing. You know, both of them ask the same thing if you would have been here. But his answer is different to both women. And, and we must remember this when we counsel people. We don't give the same, or even door knock or evangelize. It's not always, it's never the same response from us. Because we, we must be led by the Spirit in our direct response to, to allow the Spirit to speak to these people. With Martha, he, pre, he gave comfort, but used doctrine. With Mary, he gave comfort by weeping with her. Two totally different responses from the exact same question. How come he didn't tell Mary, oh, your, your, your brother will rise in the last day? Because she couldn't hold that. It was a totally different response. And we must be sensitive in our responses to people in the individual and, and have great compassion to be moved by the Holy Spirit in a direct response that's going to communicate to their spirit. That's resurrection life. That's life. So one person needed this. The other person needed just time to weep because we're all different. We're all different. And, um, and, and, and this is amazing. He's, you know, and then after that, he says, where have you laid him? Take me. Let's walk. Let's walk to the place of death together. Let's, let's go to this area. You know, where is death laid? Where's death laid? Where's the area in your life that death is laid? Because that's what's going to usher in resurrection life. Christ wants to know the areas that are, that are dead because he wants to bring them to life. He wants to bring these areas to us to resurrection life. Where's, remember this, God never intended man to die or women. That's sin's fault. That's because of sin. Sin, the, the death is a result of sin, period. So this is why through Christ, we live eternal forever. And, and, and there will be no death. So he wants to know where this death lays. He wants to see where this sin is laid. He wants to see where unbelief is. He wants to see where separation is at. What is it, where is the one that you've laid that caught, that's separating from God? Where's the result of this sin? Let me give you a, a, a few verses as we wrap this up. Remember, uh, Jesus Christ overcame death. He overcame sin and death. This is why he can claim to be the resurrection of, the li of life. It's all life. In Christ, there is no death. It's just life. It's just life. 
and we don't have to wait to die. It's, it's, it's experiential, even in the presence. We will live eternity, yet, uh, uh, eternal agreed, but he is life. And this is why he said, your brother will rise, not later. This, he's going he's gonna to do this amazing thing next week. Well, he can, I mean, according to where we're at. <laughs> but I mean, he's going to do it right then and there. So Romans 6, 5. Uh, do you have any of these verses by chance? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Romans 6, 5, we were planted together in the likeness of his death and we should, uh, and, and we sh and, and, and we'll, what is it? And we shall also be in the likeness of it. Yeah. In the likeness of his resurrection. So we shall, we're, we're, we're planted together. We're planted with Christ in, in the likeness of his death and we'll, we shall all rise in the likeness of his resurrection. The resurrection of Jesus Christ. Um, Romans 6, 8, and 9. You have that? What's it start with? Now if we begin. Hmm? Now if we begin. Okay. Isn't it that death has no dominion? Yes, yeah, that's not that's a 9. Not. Okay. So yeah, that well that's my good. Yeah, death has no dominion over you. You know, we, we believe as individuals, we look at death as a final. It's not a final. It's, if they know, it's not final. It's really just the beginning of their new life yeah. with him. And we miss loved ones, but it's not final. It's not a final thing. So... Um, yeah, is that if we die with Christ, we shall also live with him? Is that eight? Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. So, and then verse 11, Romans 6, 11, same thing. Uh, we were also who are dead in sin. We're dead unto sin, but alive unto God. And remember that, you know, because we are sinners, you know, the wages of that sin is death. But, the, but Christ paid that for that wage. Christ paid that debt. So he paid for us, and now we, have, we, are, we died with him. That's even what baptism was. When we baptize, you are baptized, and now you are raised up again under the newness of life. We are raised with Christ. We are raised with Christ. So... Jesus Christ is, is the resurrection and the life. And I love that. Do you believe this? Not just know it, not just have a great understanding, but truly understand and believe in God. We believe in God for our life. Heavenly Father, we just thank you. Lord, we just praise you. We thank you for the word of God tonight. We thank you for Jesus Christ who speaks life, who speaks life to us. And, um, and he wants to know where that death is laid. He want, He's going to go to that area, and, and he's going to speak to it. And uh, we just thank you, Father. We just thank you that you are the resurrection and the life, and, and we believe in you. And though we were dead, yet we shall live. Father, we thank you. We just praise you. Um, use these words to encourage people who have either lost a loved one or um, has a good knowledge background of it but doesn't have that life. Let them just come to Christ. We uh, also pray for the offering and, uh, and help us with this air conditioning. Hopefully we're, that we can be up and running by Sunday. Uh, Lord, we just praise you. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. amen. God bless you. Thank you, guys. I have some questions if you want.